Achievements and trophies, video games form of digital bling and a numerical representation of how much of your life you have, well, wasted, engrossed in imaginary worlds. And for the longest time, these otherwise meaningless scores and virtual trinkets have been an obsession of dedicated gamers across the globe, hellbent on one-upping their friends and proving who is the best gamer ever. Developers definitely know this, of course, and have often had fun creating their achievement lists as a way of guiding gamers through all aspects of their lovingly crafted worlds and lore. This could be through cheeky nods to prior games and other series, making the user play through their game in different ways to how they normally would, or frustratingly, as a way of showing us the middle finger. And that's what we're here to talk about today, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 dick move video game achievements made by developers. Number 10. Bullet Witch there's nothing worse than sinking in hours of hard work and slog only to be rewarded with breadcrumbs. I mean, imagine working a full nine-hour shift at work only to be handed a single strip of gum for all your effort. And the same can be said about video games. We have been spoiled since the start of the seventh generation with the gift of achievements, little fragments of gamer score goodness to help soothe the hardships of challenging scenarios. It's only natural then to assume that harder tasks will reward bigger slices of the gamer score pie, right? Well, in most cases, yes. Yeah, but this is not most cases. Bullet Witch is a third-person shooter with an emphasis on the use of the main weapon, the gun rod, in addition to multiple magical powers that protagonist Alicia can perform. Kind of think Bayonetta, but clunkier and nowhere near as entertaining. Upon completing the game on hard mode, the player is rewarded with chaos mode, another opportunity to go through the game again with yet more challenging set pieces and enemies that deal even higher damage. And for completing this mode, you'll receive a huge 250 50G reward for your efforts. Not bad, you think. But you're also rewarded with the de facto highest difficulty of all, Hell Mode. Rinse and repeat your previous efforts and crank them up to another notch, and after labouring through hours and hours of absolute torment, your achievement will then pop for 1G. This is the developer's equivalent of patronisingly patting you on the head, making you wonder if all the effort was even worth it. Number 9. 007 Goldeneye Reloaded Now from underwhelming rewards to simply stupid stupid ones. GoldenEye Reloaded was an offbeat game of sorts. Released on the Xbox 360 and PS3 a year after its Wii counterpart, the game aimed to recapture the nostalgia and multiplayer madness of its namesake from the N64 era, but did so to mixed results. GoldenEye Reloaded was not a simple reskin, it was a complete reworking of its source material, filled with similar locales but an entirely different approach to almost every scenario. One moment that remained, however, was the infamous toilet guard at the start of the second mission, Facility. Here developers Eurocom couldn't resist adding in this clever homage to the 32-bit classic, with a secret achievement no less, which was rewarded for silently taking out this unsuspecting guard while he drops anchor. Royal Flush, a tongue-in-cheek play on the poker hand, which is also a nod to Casino Royale, and an obvious sound that the toilet makes, is hilariously capped off with a score of 2G. Once the potty humour is worn off though, you realise what you're actually left with. What was once a beautifully rounded gamer score that was divisible by 5 is now utter ruined. Now, to worry you think to yourself, surely the game has an equalising achievement later on that can correct this minor irritation. <laughs> What's that? It's locked behind multiplayer achievements that require me to pay for an Xbox Live Gold membership? This is a shameful way of forcing single-player fanatics to experience the less-than-quality online side of this game, and one that will have cost many a gamer an idealistic score forever, all because of a poo joke. Number 8. Lollipop Chainsaw Sometimes a developer will likely tap into the inner psyche of a gamer. These people are not foolish, and are fully aware of what most of the predominantly male player base would do when given the control over a third-person camera on a chainsaw-wielding cheerleader in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. You know where I'm going with this, it's the achievement that pops for taking a look up Juliet's skirt. And so if you are a, air quotes, lucky member of the 100% Platinum Club for this game, well that means that you beat the game on its hardest difficulty setting, you got all of the collect which come in five different forms, and you did so much kill grinding that it probably sapped all of the fun out of the game, and you took a cheeky peek up Juliet's skirt. Grasshopper Manufacture knows your game, and decided to attach an achievement of shame to such an act of tomfoolery, forever rubber stamping this moment of weakness to your account forever. I swear I did it by mistake is a legendary example of an achievement created with the sole purpose of tainting your gamer card eternally. 
Number 7. The Simpsons Game As American animated sitcoms go, you cannot get more inherently endearing than The Simpsons. Satirical to the very core and with a very high tendency to mock and reflect real life, the concept of a shithousery achievement in a game involving this famous cartoon family is not too far-fetched or actually that surprising. And as gamers, we all love a gimme, a freebie to set us up on the right path. Complete the first mission on any difficulty, get five headshots in a row, pick up your first collectible, and so forth. These are usually achievements that come after having an initial play around with the game to decide if you're truly going to commit to completing it. And there's no shame in putting down a game and deleting it from your history if you don't like it, providing of course you haven't unlocked an achievement already. And this is where The Simpsons game gets you. All you have to do to lock this game on your gamer card forever is start the game. That's it just press start. The gift of hindsight is great, and looking back on the Simpsons game was terrific fun. I mean, not hit and run levels of fun, but respectable nonetheless. But imagine only having this first achievement for this game, sitting at a measly 5G in the midst of all of your other 750 plus G games, you know, all because you wanted to test the game out before committing. And the only fix for this would be to play the rest of the game, regardless of whether you like it or not. And that is a dick movie, eh? Number 6. Rayman Raven Rabbits Now, challenging achievements are not a bad thing. They can allow a player to better themselves to the point where they can achieve near mastery of a certain title. As we explored before, completing Bullet Witch on the hardest difficulty, while woefully low rewarding, was still obtainable for the average human being with a bit of practice and dedication. But then there is this game, which takes mastery to a whole new level. While most sane-minded people wouldn't play a party game like Rayman Raven Rabbits for the achievement list alone, one cannot resist taking a little gander at the list pre-play, where we'll see the achievement Greatest Rayman man ever, which is a seemingly simple description of just getting 183,000 points in total on score mode. Now, a simple assumption would suggest that this would probably be a challenge, but would be obtainable with the right amount of strategy and know-how. And an added bonus of a three-digit boost of 100G certainly makes you think, much like Bubsy the Bobcat, what could possibly go wrong? Well, realization sets in when you notice that getting a perfect score in all minigames only nets you 163,000 points, with the other 20,000 coming in the form of multiplayer minigames. Yikes. Now there is an acknowledgement from the majority of the online community that this achievement is classed as unobtainable, while others argue that it requires getting really good at the game. Regardless, this is a horribly made achievement by developers Ubisoft, seemingly intent on making sure nobody can achieve that perfect 1000G. Number 5. FIFA 12 Everybody's favourite developer EA makes another appearance on this list, with everybody's favourite football series FIFA, specifically the 2012 iteration of the series. Now, In general, luck-based objectives in games are a horrible beast. Being screwed over by what is essentially an RNG or perceived poor luck can often sour an experience to breaking point. Alternatively, pulling a high payday, or in this game's case, a high-rated player can pop that sweet dopamine in your brain to make you feel like the highest life form in the universe. Now, Ultimate Team, for better or worse, is a staple of the online gaming world and has been since its inception as DLC for FIFA 2009. For those unaware, it requires building a fantasy football team to take online and compete with others. The ability to trade players on the marketplace for in-game currency or coins is present, as are microtransactions to buy packs. So far, so EA, right? Well, the problem with this achievement, how great is that, is that it requires you to pack Team of the Week players on Ultimate Team. Statistically speaking, the chance of this happening in your first couple of packs is very, very low. With every failed pack opening comes frustration, which can lead to desperation. And desperation in this instance is FIFA points, the dreaded microtransaction, as attempting to farm coins can take a very long time, even to stump up enough dough to open the cheapest gold pack. So that makes this a horrendous achievement. Number 4. Left 4 Dead 2 One of the best developers in gaming around the seventh generation of consoles was PC game experts Valve. Throughout this generation, they released countless all-time classics such as Portal, Team Fortress, and the subject of this entry, Left 4 Dead, specifically the second game. Known to implement hilarious achievements and trophies into their games, Valve decided to pay homage to another one of their successful titles, Half-Life, in this entry of the Left 4 Dead series. Having the player carry a garden gnome throughout one of the campaigns, Carnival, the player would need to utilize tight teamwork and strong partnerships with their team to pull off such a feat. The excitement of popping this achievement is partially one of relief, as the knowledge that you will never have to do this again starts to set 
get in, but unfortunately this is not the case. Simply joining another co-op game on the same campaign will likely show other players attempting the same adventure with Nomi, one which normally ends in countless revives, saves, and inevitable failure because this idiot insists on taking the gnome everywhere with them. Now, while this could be classified as an unfortunate and unintentional dick move achievement from the developer, we can't help but wonder how such a possible outcome didn't cross the dev's mind when crafting their final lists. Either that, or they watched from their ivory towers as hordes of players began the same pilgrimage with that bloody gnome, laughing heartily to themselves. Number 3. Dead Rising Willamette, Colorado, a quiet scenic town whose only distinguishable feature is a giant shopping mall in the center of town, and is also the setting for the 2006 kind of open world zombie action survival game Dead Rising. With an obvious influence from the 2004 horror film Dawn of the Dead, developers Capcom struck gold with this IP, with players gushing over its lovingly cheesy B-movie-esque dialogue and voice acting and unbelievable processing ability of having hundreds of moving bodies on screen at once. The game had multiple modes unlocked by completing the main story, and they weren't difficulty-related modes, rather different ways to experience the game, and one in particular was an infinite mode, a way to experience Dead Rising as an all-out survival experience, with all the psychopath and bosses spawning at the same time and food and items not respawning after use. And this brings us to the infamous 7-Day Survivor Achievement, a 14-hour straight gameplay experience which tasked the player with playing a near-perfect pre-planned run of the game, knowing where to hide for periods of time time, where to collect food from, and which psychopaths to butcher at the right times. No saving, no pausing, no reloading after dying. This takes the word commitment to a whole new stratosphere. With every achievement in this game earning 20G, this will not feel like a worthwhile reward for the countless efforts and wasted days required to unlock this. If you have this one, well then congratulations, you are the butt of a Capcom joke that proves that we gamers will do anything just for the G's. Number 2. Guitar Hero World Tour Time to dust off your five multicolored plastic guitars and strap on that metal bandana and whisk yourself off to a rock star dreamland. It's hard to explain why people who didn't grow up with Guitar Hero and Rock Band how much fun they actually were. The concept is completely preposterous, because basically rather than learn to play a real guitar, why not spend upwards of £80 on a piece of plastic on which you can pretend to play guitar on? Now The fun of Guitar Hero comes from its replayability. No two runs of a song are going to be the same, and just when you finally mastered that tricky solo, you'll likely fluff a simple power chord like the foolish shredder you are. When you finally 100% a song, there is a sense of self-worth that grows inside you as pride settles in. You are a guitar hero god. But here lies the problem. It can take folks with little rhythmic timing years to fully master the complexities of Guitar Hero, with some simply giving up at medium difficulty. So what Guitar Hero World Tour asks of you for one of its achievements is downright cruel. Platinum Rockstars is obtained by 100%ing a song on Hard or Expert as part of a four-piece band. That's right, not only do you need to learn how to play the guitar like Slash, you need three other friends who sing like Freddie Mercury, drum like Travis Barker, and groove on bass like Mike Durnt. In short, just learn real instruments and start an actual band at this point. And number one, fight night round four. This is it. We are in the final round. Leave everything out there in the ring. Years of fighting have led you to this one moment, the moment to win the world championship and prove that you are literally the best the world has to offer. This is how real life boxing works, and funnily enough, it's how virtual boxing works if you play Fight Night Round 4. With the previous game of the series being a goldmine for achievement hunters for its straightforward 1000G, EA responded with as much aplomb as you'd expect from that organization by releasing three different online weight division titles that can only be held by one player at a time. Oh yeah, and they attached three separate achievements to them as well. That's right, much like the infamous Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter achievement for being the literal best player in the world, you need to do that three times over. Achievements like this deserve to be wiped from existence, because this is a thing you are locking nearly 99% of the player base out of ever achieving this. And to do this three times over, come on EA, even for you, that's gross. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 dick move video game achievements made by developers. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ, but the O is a zero, or the same for Instagram, RetroJ, but the O is a zero. Hope to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope you're treating yourself with love and respect, my friend. Don't be a dick to yourself. You deserve all of the best things like love, happiness, and success. And hopefully, if you do that, you'll achieve a much happier and healthier life. And that's all I want for you, my friend. I want you to go out there and smash your life goals today. I believe in you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. 
I'll speak to you soon. Bye.